What's up guys? What's growing on? So I do not do cold well. As you can see, I've got my, my double hoodie on. Yes, that is our heater running here this morning and uh, it's a cold morning in Florida. And I'm stepping outside to actually do a little bit of a frost check and see what's okay and what's not okay. What maybe shows a little bit of damage from this cold night. So I am in, uh, everybody knows, most of y'all know at least, we're in North Pasco, so I'm really close to Hernando, um, probably about 25, 30 miles north of Tampa. And I'm seeing reports of 30 to 32 degrees, you know, 25 minutes south of me. You know, and there's definitely some low-lying areas that get a little bit colder. Um, I went out to the car this morning, got my gun out at about 6.30, maybe 6 a.m. And over, over here by the house, I was reading about 37 degrees. Now I'm heading out to the market garden, and it is looking like we potentially have a little frost. So um, I actually just touched what almost felt like ice here on the gate. And let's go out and see what's going on. So we definitely have a little bit of ice out here this morning. You can see the weeds have ice on top of them. I don't know if we should say ice, let's say frost, but these are definitely some frosted sweet potatoes. These are definitely gonna turn black by this afternoon, so this entire cover crop in this area will be gone. Most likely, the tips will just get frozen off of the Mexican sunflower, but I'll come out and do a follow-up for you all on that. You know, and we'll see what happens to the Moringa. You know, I definitely see defrosting Moringa right here. So, it did get a little bit nipped. Everything out here in the market garden is super cold hardy. You know, all these mulberries, all these peaches, all these figs, these are all temperate species that can handle being over here. And I think what's really cool is, so you guys obviously see we had frost last night. Got really cold. I'm guessing it was probably, you know, 32 degrees maybe over here. So that 37 by the car was underneath the canopy in that microclimate. Um, Should have came out here to the front field and got a reading this morning and seen how cold it was really over here. But what's interesting is, you know, just as we get on the edge of the market garden, and we'll see, you know, they might not be quite showing it yet, but there's where our, our tropicals kind of start to come into play. And we've got some bananas, and I'm not seeing like I would normally see if they really took that hit. That's ice. Whoa! So, definitely got a little cold at Sand Hill Farm here last night. Um, you know, this is not typical Florida weather. But, uh, you know, this does happen every once in a while. This is definitely something we have to expect and plan for. Um, and you just never know. So, I have a feeling that these bananas might have gotten nipped more than I was thinking they got nipped. But I think everything in the understory is probably still really good. There is one of our most cold hardy jackfruits. So, if this one ever fruits, we're definitely naming it Jack Frost because this one is in the most exposed part of the farm. Never showed any type of effect. I'm sure if we got into the, you know, 20s, teens, that might not be the same thing. But as of right now, you know, that stuff still looks great. Guava, no signs of any cold damage. Um, papaya, no signs of any cold damage. All the perennials out here still look really, really good. But, you know, obviously the, uh, the telltale is going to be Heading back in here to this canopy. All right, as we're walking back into the canopy here this morning, um, bananas are looking fine. Lychee's looking really good. No signs of frost whatsoever back here in the canopy. All trees look good. No ice. You, know, you can usually tell, I mean, these, these leaves look like they had the life sucked out of them after we've had a frost. Um, and I have had a frost in here. I mean, you know, all this stuff grows back. It's not the end of the world. Um, if we do get a serious frost, it just means we're not going to get, you know, as quick a production next year. I mean, but we just had frost, and as you can see, there is star fruits for days hanging out here still. Look at all these star fruits. They're kind of immature still, but they're here. Let's kind of go up through the cut here, see what's growing on, see if we can find any frost damage for y'all. Banana's looking pretty good. I know out in the backfield we might have a little bit of damage. Um, I did not protect my nursery, so, you know, I, I actually have the overhead running in the banana areas. That's a low pressure zone. I turned that on at 530. 
turned it off at 7.30 to keep any frost from setting on those guys. So hopefully we gained a little protection that way. And this area where I'm heading right now, technically always gets nipped. This is a very cold area. So, you know, we were just in the north, um, west corner of the farm, heading to the southeast. These are our two exposed areas. That whole center area, that nucleus area of the farm is pretty well protected from this, you know, giant oak canopy. I mean, you know, it's, it's no joke. We have a, a lot of grandfather oaks here on the property. They really help to keep that heat locked in. Um, you know, we get a little bit of that microclimate. So really, that's what's really allowing us to push, pushing, you know, this tropical edge out here. Now these bananas definitely look a little bit more battered. Um, seeing a little frost on the roof. These ones are kind of on that drip edge effect. So they're right on the edge of the oaks. A couple of them look like they got a little something on the leaves. And that one definitely looks like it possibly took some frost. You can almost see the frost kind of coming off of there and it'll probably melt here in the next day or two. Hoping that most of my nursery is pretty much okay. There's only a few things out here that we really should be protecting, um, but I did not. I didn't have time for that. These bananas technically always get it. So, you know, here we go. This is a great example of the frost. You can see the frost patches out here on the ground. You can see where they set down. There's frost, there's frost, there's frost. There's frost. The whole thing wasn't frosted. The frost doesn't cover everything. You know, it was kind of sporadic. So these bananas, I'm guessing that one does not look very good. They probably took a toll. Um, you know, we still got some ice here on the ground. These Mexican sunflowers got nipped. I'm really hoping, you know, the last year was not a banner year for loquats here. Um, a lot of our loquats are flowering out. A lot of our loquats are looking really good. I was thinking we were going to have a smoking year for loquats. We might have possibly had some, you know, some, some flower damage from that frost. I'm hoping not. They are pretty cold hardy. They are pretty tough. But the frost can damage those flowers and get them to fall off and can affect my fruit set. I did not even close the greenhouse last night. I've been busy. Typically, I'd come out here, roll down the sides on the greenhouse, maybe even put down the front door. I can tell you something that's not going to like this. It's going to be that, uh, that soursop. This is probably gonna defoliate. We'll see. I also see we have some critter damage. I'm not very excited about this. Son of a gun. So this is what happens when you don't get to your pineapples fast enough. Looks like the coon beat me to it. Unfortunately, I do not see any frost underneath here. Although, you know, where this Jackfruit's touching the roof right here, it does not look too happy. So I'm sure it was touching right where that frost was. There's my um, tropical pumpkin, calabaza, seminal pumpkin, whatever you want to call it. That's done. That's it. Um, there's nothing left of that. I'm going to have to get out here and uh, see if I found any, you know, find any pumpkins I missed. We don't want those pumpkins dying back and rotting. You know, I'd much rather obviously harvest whatever pumpkins I have left. And I think there's actually a couple over there behind the greenhouse. So we'll go over there and check in a second. Chipotacabas can handle down into the, uh, the mid 20s. I probably have about 200 of those. That's probably one of my favorite fruit trees here on the farm. Um, but they can handle the cold, so I'm not too worried about them. I honestly think that the one that might catch a little bit of frost damage, and I'll show you guys right now, is probably the strawberry tree. Um, they don't hurt very, you know, liking of the cold. These are subtropical trees. Um, you know, they already had some spots on them. Those spots are, uh, you know, tend to kind of start showing up as soon as it gets cold out here. So, you know, if they get zapped back, they get zapped back. Hopefully we just lose a little foliage um, and they re-sprout back out and don't die back to the roots. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a frost update um, as I'm pulling back in from when I uh, left this morning, it's definitely a little bit more, little bit more evident in some areas. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like after the frost comes through. So this is an interesting one. And you know, this is one that the books would tell you, you cannot grow. Um, this is one that you would expect to get frost. You know, this is one that would have expected to get toasted. It did not. You know, this is a Moringa. 
definitely a tropical tree. Um, you know, last year we had seven frosts. You know, being out here in the market garden, northeast, you know, northwest corner of the farm, probably one of the coldest areas on the property. This thing didn't get affected last year. This thing didn't get affected this year. This thing is like, I almost want to say frost proof, but I know I'll get attacked for that. Let's just say pretty tough for a tropical species. Very impressed. I think almost no matter where you grow, you could grow Moringa as an annual. This stuff grows so quickly from seed. Um, you, know, you could be harvesting it in two months after you put a seed in the ground. Uh, something else I want to point out, you know, Mexican sunflower. This stuff is not supposed to be doing fine. Um, it looks pretty good. You know, the frost pretty much just settled on the ground over there. I'm not seeing any damage. I mean, you know, the peaches do look a little bit funky, but they're actually due to drop their leaves. Obviously, the mulberries are due to drop their leaves. The figs already dropped their leaves. And you can hear crunch, crunch. I mean, that's dry. That's brittle. Um, I lost all of my ground cover protection out here in the front field. Now, what I can tell you is we're mid-December. Last year, this happened early November. So I got an extra month and a half before my first frost this year. You know, that allowed me to have that ground, that soil covered that much longer. You know, can I come in and put some mulch down? Can I come in and put some hay down? You know, hopefully all of these areas are pretty much bare that were sweet potatoes just a couple days ago. They're gonna need something on there before the weeds, you know, to stop those weeds from coming in. I need to protect that soil, you know, and, and basically get something down on it, whether it be straw, whether it be hay, whether it be mulch, um, whether it be a wintertime cover crop. I mean, I guess I could probably even put ryegrass down out here. Now, that's a possibility also. So, need to get something down on the ground, need to get this covered. Probably have a couple of weeks to do so. I want to get that done probably through before, you know, mid-January or something like that. So, within the next four weeks. So, I've had a lot of questions, a lot of people ask about the peanut. And as I was pulling in, it's actually what sparked me to remake this video or do a little bit of a follow-up to the morning video. The peanut is showing a little bit of damage. And I guess I can just take you all down there. Let's check this out. So the peanut is definitely showing some cold damage. I see a lot of spots in the leaves. I definitely think that had something to do with the cold. Sounds more brittle than it normally is. Feels a little bit crispier. I see some turned edges on them. So it's definitely not ruined, but it was definitely affected by the frost a little bit. You know, all these peaches, I mean, you know, these are due to lose their leaves. Persimmons pretty much lost their leaves already. You know, here's the loquat. Hopefully this one sets a pretty heavy fruit for us. Really beautiful shaped tree. Been doing a lot of tip work on this one. Got a really nice shape to it. It's looking pretty good. Hopefully it sets some fruit. And obviously sweet almonds, super cold hardy, nothing to worry about there. Olive, super cold hardy, powder puff, super cold hardy. Um, sweet acacia, definitely one I haven't done a video on yet. Pretty awesome smelling, awesome looking. Nitrogen fixer, quite beautiful. Has some little spikes on it that I will point out. Oh, hey Ginger, so here we go. You know, I've had nights out here where the native firebush gets smoked. I've had nights out here where, you know, I couldn't do this to the Mexican sunflower or days out here after a freeze where this stuff just melts. This is a very soft green, you know, this is not, it's not cold hardy. Um, you know, it's, it's not a problem. It usually grows back in a few months after it's been nipped. But I just think it's so interesting that the Mexican sunflower is fine, the sweet potatoes got nipped, the moringa's fine, the bananas are fine, couple things on the other side of the farm, you know, got nipped, but all my tropicals in the understory are still rocking out. So, wanted to make you all a little update, show you that, you know, it's not all the end of the world when we get a frost here in Florida. Um, now, it's very well expected, especially out here in the front part of the field. You know, I'm used to this. This is, this is a regular. Not like I wasn't expecting it. Like I said, I'll take that extra, you know, month and a half that I got this year before we actually got that first frost. So, I think the cassavas are pretty much done out here. Most of my perennials are pretty much done out here. Cranberry hibiscus still hanging on. We already got all the turmeric pulled up. And I have not planted any annual vegetables. So, you know, that was something. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a rocking garden in before Justin comes. We cleared, we prepped a couple of beds over here. I prepped a big bed right here. 
I didn't get anything in the ground. I got way too busy. Um, that guy that y'all seen in that video at Jim's house, that didn't work out. He didn't end up coming, you know, kind of end up spearheading that market, market garden thing like I was dreaming about. But that's okay. It's all good. Actually, just direct seeded some arugula. It's not up yet, but I am going to get some salad greens for my yard this winter. Still eating a lot of the perennial vegetables. Not going to be eating the sweet potato greens, obviously. Um, but I just wanted to point it out to y'all. I mean, you know, I'd say, you know, out of everything we had frosted that we lost, I'm a little upset about the pumpkin, but it is what it is. I already harvested, you know, 40 seminal pumpkins this year. No big deal. Um, all my passion vines, and that's something I really think is cool. I wish to just like get up here at the drone and go around these trees, but all my passion vines up here on the oaks, and especially one of those front oaks. On one of the front ones, I have a, a variety called a, a giant granadilla, and that's like a, a you know like a watermelon-sized passion fruit. It's supposed to be a little bit on the sour side, but that one's supposed to be really cold sensitive. Didn't look affected at all. So lots of exciting, cool stuff going on out here. You know, some things got a little nip, everything else pretty much okay. If we get another colder night tonight, we do. It is what it is, there's nothing we can do about that. I'll come out and show you guys if we have any new damage. So, hold tight, like, subscribe, share, most importantly, bounty.